How's it going, Teal Boys? It is Bowl Week here. Well, technically not. Uh, we'll advance to Bowl Week. <laughs> but we are 9-3 and three looking for that chance at the 10th win on the season. Ranked 25th. Are we going to the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl? And what will the New Year's Six Bowls look like? Uh, Caton Thompson? Keaton Thompson? Not sure how you pronounce that. The... Uh, quarterback, senior redshirt from Virginia, will win the Heisman. Uh, you got the running backs from Michigan and UNC in second and third. But how about that? Let's see, 246 of 392 for 3,000, almost 400 yards. 170 carries for almost 1,000 yards and 42 total touchdowns. That's not too bad. Will we win any awards, though, is the question. We are playing in the New Orleans Bowl against... Number 19, North Texas. Kind of interesting. They went 11-2, so not the middle Tennessee matchup that we thought we were going to see. And there it is. Aaron Diggs for the second year in a row. Wins his returner of the year. The Johnny Rogers Award. And no other awards for us. I'm assuming that we won't have any All-Americans either. Except for maybe Aaron Diggs as, yeah, as returner. So he's now a... I think a two-time award winner and All-American. Kind of an interesting spread. And Kosi Perry actually ends up being the first team All-NCAA quarterback. So the Heisman winner, not even uh, the first team All-American. And how about this? Mason Shelton, our sophomore uh, middle linebacker. Second team All-American. 72 overall. He's definitely around players that are a lot higher overall than him. But he's only a sophomore, so we have a, probably two more years with the man. Do we have any freshmen making that list? I imagine not. How about the All-Sun Belt? This one, we could see a lot. Grayson McCall is the first-team All-Sun Belt quarterback. We have Hall at defensive tackle, Shelton the Gunter at linebacker, and Derek Bush hitting the corner spot. Braden Matz at free safety, Spillum <laughs> at strong safety. Discardi, our kicker, and Aaron Diggs returning. So somehow our terrible defense has like a, almost the entire defensive secondary on the first team list. Uh, Reese White and Dion Fountain are going to go ahead and make that second team. Anybody else? No, that's still a lot of guys. So the all-conference honors looking pretty solid for us. Middle Tennessee State, the team that we thought we were going to play, is actually playing Notre Dame in the New Mexico Bowl. Uh, what a weird bowl matchup. Here's ours, the New Orleans Bowl. I'll kind of slowly scroll through these so that you guys can uh, see maybe if your favorite team is in a matchup and who they're against, and then we'll scroll through the results as well. But the ones that I'm interested in are further down here. The Peach Bowl is an interesting one. North Carolina, South Carolina, massive massive game there uh probably a, a very interesting bowl matchup for that one the rose bowl will be michigan washington we've got ohio state clemson in the fiesta bowl texas auburn in the sugar bowl the cotton bowl is nebraska an unranked eight and five nebraska versus number six oh, iowa state interesting there oregon florida in the orange bowl that's a curious one as well number four gators against the number 10 ducks both taste like chicken, potentially. It's a terrible joke. Uh, how about the national championship, though? Miami and Oklahoma sneak it in there. Well, maybe not sneaking in there, but making it in there. Uh, didn't Texas win the Big 12? They might have been snubbed 11-1. and one. The Sooners are looking to end the undefeated season for Miami. Curious to see how that one goes as well. And I just got to check the Big 12. Yeah, Texas won the conference. Um, but I guess because they had one more loss, they get jumped by the Sooners. The crazy thing is I think that Texas beat Oklahoma. Yeah, so not only do they have the win over the team that somehow got ranked in front of them, they also won the conference. What were Texas's losses? They lost at Tennessee and in overtime and at Iowa State, who's number six in overtime so maybe the Tennessee loss isn't good but they beat Oklahoma and they lost a close one to uh, Iowa State so they get to go up against number eight Auburn no national championship for the Longhorns the season leaders Kosi Perry 
his first in passing yards, followed by Trevor Lawrence. Grayson McCall down at 57th in the country, rushing-wise. That uh, Michigan running back, Zach Charbonnet, comes in first with 2,000. And Oregon Cyrus Habibilikio uh, with 1,950. 51 yards, shy of 1,000 yards, or shy of 2,000. Reese White down in 86th with uh, less than 1,000 on the season. Javon Hiley is our receiving leader in 141st with 600 yards. Uh, nowhere near that top five. Those guys all over 1,300. Tackle-wise, we have three of the top five, but again, um, the way that this game calculates tackles in a played versus a simmed matchup are completely different, so you kind of have to discount that. But the sacks are allowed. Hall ends up with eight on the season, puts him 15th in the country, and only a couple sacks off of that top five. Interception-wise, DeJordan Strong finished the season with three of them, puts him on 164th, and he should have had more as well as Derek Bush. And kicking-wise, Massimo Biscardi ends up in sixth, probably tied for sixth as... Uh, he just needed one more yard to get to that top spot, but a 54-yarder, uh, we're going to miss him. He's a senior. I don't think we have a good kicker coming in to replace him. I guess we can move on here to our matchup. No recruiting to do this week. We had looked at uh, a previous matchup. I think we looked at the Middle Tennessee one, and it was interesting. Here, Lee Corso not going for us. He's pulling for North Texas. And uh, I I mean, it's going to be a close one. We know that for a fact. They go 11-2, and 8-1 and one in conference. What were their losses? Anything impressive? They lost to Texas, okay, but they got slaughtered. So, like, they couldn't even keep it close, only scoring a field goal. Uh, and then lost to Louisiana Tech, whereas we had our three losses. One at uh, a close one against a good Clemson team. And then a close one at Texas State, a pretty good Texas State. And a close one against Appalachian State. So we're not expected to do all too well. We do have the overall advantage, but it is oh so slight. And that's not great news for us. 81 to their 79 overall with a two overall advantage on offense and two on defense as well. We are technically the Hoden team. I'm not sure that's going to help. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and wear the standard jerseys, get that brand recognition up in North Texas. The Mean Green haven't been updated, I don't think. Uh, you know, honestly, sometimes I get a little bit confused, but uh, we're going to allow them to wear some team colors here. How about, can we maybe do a little something here? Will it allow me to give them, maybe if I do something, we can get their, uh, their good uniforms. Okay, I kind of figured it out. We're going to do a colorway game. Uh, that means that we have to wear our black jerseys, and that will allow them to wear the full greens. So, there we go. Got it done. Let's load into this one. On the season, they are looking like they had a very mediocre offense. Hopefully, they do try to pass on us because I just don't feel like trying to stop the run. Uh, but defensively, they were pretty solid. They didn't do a great job stopping the run, so that's where we're hopefully going to be able to pick up our yards. But we were one of the worst in the country at picking up rushing yards. But uh, if we can score some points, we might have a chance. Their best players, again, this is, uh, this is actually our next year's best players. The best players that we have currently are gone. So Grayson McCall far and away going to be the best player on the team next year. And then Reese White will be uh, number two there. We are bringing in some good recruits, so that'll help. But their best players next year, uh, maybe a little bit more average uh, better than us. Or better than us on average. And they've got two guys out, a middle linebacker and a uh, strong safety. So that's going to help. I guess the safety is probable, but uh, I don't know. Is he going to play with the broken collarbone? That's not something that I would want to see. We are here in Louisiana, in New Orleans, at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome for this bowl game. North Texas goes with heads. Of course they lose because tails never fails. We're going to elect to kick this ball off. Seven. And for the final time in his career, Biscardi will begin a game booting one into the end zone. This is going to be, again, returnable by design. We'll see if we can maybe get them at a good spot. Oh, we slowed him down. This is a very dangerous return. He broke some tackles, and he's out past the 40-yard line. So that is not a great start to the game. First and 10 with great field position. They're going to throw the screen, and Bush has the interception. He jumped it. And just like that, we get the ball back. So it went from being a bad start to the game to a great one, as thankfully Derek was able to hold on to that one. 
So the defense coming out with a bang. And I think maybe they're a little bit lucky that uh, that one wasn't a pick six as Reese on first down picks up five. I want to run this ball as much as we can in the game. But realistically, I know that some passing is going to be necessary, including a pass there to Dion Fountain. Looked like there was a chance at a face mask, but we'll take that 11 yards for sure. Some of the best news for us is that for sure a bunch of production from the offense will come back. We are keeping our starting running back and quarterback. Reese and Grayson both are returning, and so is uh, Dion Fountain. And I'm fairly certain that we'll keep at least uh, one or two of the other wide receivers. So as long as we can shore up maybe some line problems, I think our offense might just get better. Second and goal from the six-yard line. I'm looking for Dion Fountain. He's got the one-on-one, -on -one and the pass is there. He's held on to it. And just like that, we've scored first. The touchdown, Grayson starts the game 2-2. Two two. We take a 7-0 lead. One thing I completely didn't notice until just now is that we're actually ranked 23rd. We were 25th. Maybe uh, it's a difference in polls that they're using, but uh, maybe I shouldn't let these guys return. They're doing very good. So the defense gets to come out again, and they threw a pick on uh, their first play. So we're bringing a blitz here. They went right back to the screen. The balls from the offensive coordinator, is uh, it works that time for seven yards. This team didn't run a whole lot to begin with in the season, but we're going to start bringing a lot of pressure. I'm just not going to trust another short throw. Derek Bush can't get the tackle. Sidney McRae actually had his tackle broken, but uh, Alberding stepped out of bounds. So we're going to be running a lot of man coverage uh, if they're running these screens this frequently this game. And it's going to be stepping back to pass again. A wide open man on the out route. And he made a weird cut, so he didn't get the first down, but he got almost all of it anyways. So they cross midfield, their best field position so far in the game. This looked like it was going to be another screen. And a man, yeah, getting open. I saw it coming. I just couldn't quite get my user there in time. And they pick up 27 more. Right now, it's very much feeling like a thank goodness that the uh, defense got their stop early and that we were able to turn it into points because this is not looking great. They are moving the ball oh so well, and it's a first and goal at about the six for them now. Let's see what we can do. They finally hand it off on the one play where we don't bring a blitz. Thankfully, we're only uh, giving up two yards there. We're going to continue this two-man rush. I expect them to pass. No, they go with the option. They get the pitch out. Spillum is there. It's a loss of a yard. We might hold them to a field goal here. We're going to continue with this uh, nine Velcro and just not bring a lot of pressure because it seems like it's working so far. They will step back to pass again. And in the end zone, they had a man open, but they had two guys run into each other. So it's incomplete and it's fourth and goal. It seems like we've held them to this field goal. Midway through the first quarter, if our offense gets a chance to come out and score again, that'll be great. And this kick is good. So the defense bent but did not break. It uh, gives us a chance to extend the lead. Diggs, the returner of the year, first team All-American for his returning. Getting the chance there. I think he might have stepped out of bounds, but they say 31 yards on the return. Let's go ahead and throw the play action on first down. Passing has been working kind of well. Over the middle, we have Javon Hiley, I think that was, but Grayson just missed him. Maybe getting hit as he was throwing that one. Got to pick up some yards through the running game now on second and 10. Make a, a manageable third down if it comes to that, and it might not come to that. Reese finding the gap and picking up 10 yards on that second down. I guess I do need to remember that their run defense was kind of the weak point uh, for the D, so we'll just try to attack that a little bit. I still want to get some passing involved, but if it's going to be this easy, I might uh, have a hard time not calling runs. Second and six. We're going to flip this one. Uh, and then let's bring Bedgood out of there. There we go. Feel a little bit more comfortable with that. And Reese has some room. Oh, that diving tackle saved that from becoming bigger, but still eight yards there. Another play action opportunity on this first down from midfield. As this is a, maybe a tough throw, we find Isaiah Likely just inbounds for 15 more yards. So Grayson starts this game three of four. He's already got a touchdown. 
He's got some yards on the ground as well. This is uh, a pretty productive game for our sophomore quarterback. It's a productive game for Reese White as well. Seven carries for 48 yards. Came out looking for the bubble screen, but I don't like the look, so we're going to send them deep. And they press up, which is great news for us. Somebody has to get free. There's Javon Hiley, who catches it in stride and takes two more steps into the end zone for an easy second touchdown pass of the day uh, for Grayson McCall, and we extend the lead to 11. So we went from the screen into the perfect audible, beat their press, and the defense gets a chance to come out and get the stop again as the tight end had a re late release and uh, got a way too easy 15 yards. Not happy with the way that the defense has been performing for the most part as that one was right over the middle and I thought maybe I could get in there and disrupt it but just kind of missed and they get nine more yards. See if we can manage to bring some pressure. We brought the corner blitz. The corner got picked up though. Sidney McRae and our linebacker both got picked up or had their tackles broken though. So this offense is really moving with ease, it seems like. First and 10 again. Will they go to the ground? Yes, they found a little bit of success, and they're trying to use it, but we do meet them in the backfield. Second and 10, definitely expecting a pass here. No, another handoff, and not quite the first down. There was a good hit, but uh, third and two is going to be tough to stop. Part of me wants to bring pressure, but I don't think I'll have to. A false start from the offensive lineman. Make it a third and seven. They failed on their first third down attempt there inside the 10. Will they do it again here on third and seven? It's a big throw. The Jordan Strong couldn't get there in time. And it's a first down to Greg White. Part of me wants to challenge that. Uh, they're in the hurry up here, so that it won't be an automatic review, but I don't think it's worth the loss of timeout that we would likely incur. As they're moving so quick right now. Trying to bring some pressure on second and three. They go with the draw. Can we meet them in the backfield? We can. It's a loss of a yard. And another third down as this one is going to go actually into the end of the quarter. Uh, yeah, I can't. I got to be honest. That was a great first quarter for us. Typically doesn't work that well, but we come out uh, an interception on the first play. Couple of passing touchdowns, some nice movement. Defense is doing a good enough job, and we get the ball to start the third quarter. I gotta say, I can't really ask for a whole lot more from my guys. Third and four, I would love a stop, though. They will go to the air, and the quarterback's gonna scramble, and he's gonna get taken down. It's a sack, it's a loss of four, and they're gonna be forced to kick another field goal here. If the offense can continue to score, then the defense will be doing a more than enough uh, on this game, just holding them to three points at a time would be fantastic. And to start the second quarter, they get up to six points total. Really just need Diggs to give us a great return on this one as it's a very returnable ball. If the blocking is good, maybe he sets a, up the offense for a good drive. Never mind. The blocking is not good. We're inside the 20. <laughs> so I'm definitely not expecting this to be uh, an easy or a quick drive. See if we can put our nose down to the grindstone and just uh, march our way down the field here. We've got another play action on second and four. Looking for the deep ball. Getting outside the pocket. I don't see anybody really open enough to make the throw. So we'll scramble and Grayson <laughs> just took a shot. But we got 18 yards on the carry no matter what. First and 10. We're going to go back to the play action. Uh, trying to find somebody open. Oh, I just threw a pick. Oh. oh, what am I doing there? He was clearly in bounds too. Oh, I am such a fool. Oh, I had initially called a read option, but I didn't want to cheese the uh, one of the easiest plays in the game. So went away from it. Uh, the audible didn't work. And now I imagine that we're going to give up a touchdown. First and 10. See if we can bring the blitz. We, there's a little bit of pressure up the middle, but the quarterback found his man for 10 more yards. Feels like it doesn't matter how much pressure we bring. They just continue to uh, beat us. And we're really not getting enough pressure on the quarterback. Eight more yards there on the carry. Need a good play desperately. First and 10, trying to get to the running back, and Gunter hits him in the backfield. That's a great loss of a yard to force the second down. 
At this point, we desperately need the stop. We can't afford to give up a touchdown because they'll just tie it up. Quarterback's going to scramble. Oh my gosh, I got burned. Thankfully, he didn't pick up the first down, but this should be third and long, not third and three. I'm absolutely expecting a run on this third down, but they're going to go to the air. Quarterback's scrambling. Nobody's going to be there to stop him. Can we get him before he finds the end zone? No. Kind of fights through the tackle, and just like that, they're probably going to go for two here. So we will expect them to go to the air, but we're bringing a lot of pressure regardless. And it's a pass. Who's going to be open in the end zone? I got there at the perfect time, but Greg White held on to it for the two-point conversion. And because of my stupid decision-making on the pick, it's a tie ball game. That is unacceptable. I don't want to throw for the rest of the game if that's going to happen to me. Diggs, well, we'll bring this out because we got nothing to lose. With three and a half minutes left in the first half, Diggs has a lot of space. He's not going to have enough to score, but jukes a bunch of guys out and got about five more yards. A good 51-yard return there. Honestly, if you are an opposing team, it's better for you just to kick the kickoff out of bounds and take the penalty than allow this man to touch it. Reese White getting a decent run on first down, and that's why I'm confused why I go away from the running. It's working so well with this game. Plus, the longer that we keep their defense on the field and ours off, the easier it'll get as the game goes on. Uh, but I just, I never make the right decision, I guess. Hopefully we've done it this time, though. Third and one, calling the halfback dive to Reese. He's averaging like seven yards a carry, bouncing that one to the edge. I made sure that I got enough for the first down, but tried to get some more. And uh, now we'll look for the slip screen. I'm not going to sell myself on throwing it right away. But yeah, there's maybe enough blocking, at least for positive yards. And that's really all that we're looking for on a first down. Two minutes to go in this half. I don't want them to get the ball again because I feel like they'll definitely score. So we will just uh, continue to run the clock, hand off where it's necessary, and uh, allow Reese to continue to pick up the yards. With us getting the ball to start the third quarter, any lead that we can take into halftime is going to be pretty solid. But uh, it could have been more than uh, what we're currently looking at. Nine more yards there for Reese. He's close to 184 already. Come out looking at the bubble screen. Again, though, they're kind of lining up how I don't like it. We're going to try it anyways. And Mobley gets the catch, has some space. Couldn't make the man miss, but gets us a first and goal with a minute and a half left in this half. That bubble screen has really become a, a solid part of our offense, as much as I hate to admit it. As a hater of screens in general, Reese with the great spin move frees him up for six. And we can just keep burning the clock. To me, it's almost a little bit foolish of North Texas not to be using their timeouts because uh, we're just going to make sure that they don't get a chance to get the ball back. And unless we turn the ball over here, we should be getting the lead. 10 seconds to go. We'll snap this to Reese White up the middle again. The blocking is there, and that's why we burned some clock because he's in already. We might have given them too much time, but it's a seven-point lead nonetheless. These guys have been good on the return, but I'm going to put it where they can return it anyways. Wish we could have gotten maybe another yard deep into the end zone, but that's fine. And this just burns the clock is the way I see it, even if they do get out to the 30. So we're going to come out in the dime package, showing some man defense, seeing if we can stop this. Expecting a lot of short throws or out routes, and that one worked way too well. 20 yards, and they got out of bounds immediately. All right, let's try a cover three on this first down. We know that they're passing. It's just a question of whether or not we can, like, actually stop it. This one's over the middle. They get a first down and uh, take the timeout. 28 seconds. <laughs> I told you they were going to score if they got the ball back. Pretty much nothing that I can do to, uh, to get a stop here. Another first down. They go back to pass again over the middle. That's a great stop for us. They're forced to take their second timeout. If we can just get these guys to where they have to kick a field goal, that's a win in my book right now. 24 seconds. Quarterback's going to scramble. Breaks one tackle. Gets sacked after the second. And the clock will be moving. Big third and seven here as they go in the hurry up. Not wanting to take their time out for some reason. They get the snap off. And there's a man open. He was inbounds for the first down, but only three seconds. We will hold them to a field goal. 
So I assume that they'll hit this. This is not a very long field goal. What is this, like 38 yards? But we've sent Diggs back to return it just in case. And the kick is <laughs> up and way too good. 21-17 as the half comes to a close. Uh, we should be up by more. Both teams with an interception. But uh, honestly, I'm disappointed to only be up four. The running game worked really well to start the first half. Um, let's hope that that continues and let's just avoid the turnovers and we should be fine. Another return for Diggs. There's again tons of space for him as he gets out to the sideline and I'll dive forward across the 45 to start us just at about midfield again. And trying not to immediately contradict myself like I often do, we will come out and run on first down. The blocking is pretty solid and Reese continues to run very well. He gets nine yards on that carry. That one put him over 100 on the day, and we're just going to continue to go back to him. Second and one, try the halfback plunge, and we made some guys miss. That was a great little juke to get the uh, linebackers out of the way, and we got eight more. So far, this has felt far too easy. Uh, so now it's time for a counter to the man. The blocking, one guy really to make miss. He made two of them miss. <laughs> he couldn't get the safety. Still got us into a second and three here. So Reese coming out and feasting to start the half. And, uh, well, we can't just only run, so we'll try a play action. And X is open. We find Isaiah Likely just across the 15 for a first down. Got to mix those in there to remind them that passing is still an option for us. But we'll go back to the ground, and Reese will finally lose some yards. They dialed up the blitz, and it worked very well. So we'll try to go to the air. Slot outs on second and 13. And this is a risky one. We find Tyson Mobley and he got a couple yards back, but it's still third and long. So we're going to go to the air here, hoping to find something maybe over the middle, trying to stay patient. We have Bedgood and he's in. Oh, just playing a little bit too soft on the zone. And we're able to find him there for our third, fourth touchdown of the game. 28 to 17 now. We'll see if we can maybe do something on defense to uh, start this half for us. They go to the air. The out route's open. Gives up four yards. There's not a whole lot we can do against that. And we're going to take a big, big risk on it. Second down. The safety blitz. They will hand it off. We were there in the backfield, and they'll lose a yard. And we'll force the third down. The question now is, can we hold them? Force them to punt. Third and seven. The snap is off. It's a screen. I don't know if we'll be able to get around the blocking. Shelton was able to do so. The stiff arm cheese won't be enough for the first down, and we're going to force them to punt this one away. The defense has started both halves very well. An interception on their first drive, a three and out on their second. And Diggs going to be back to return this punt. We'll see. Can we get some blocking? No, I just ran right into the tight end was gunning down on us but hey the offense has a chance to extend the lead again we'll continue to try to avoid turnovers opening this drive with a dive up the middle the blocking is okay and we did get positive yards we will try to pass now on second and eight not really a deep safety maybe we find Bedgood Bedgood had a step on his man it's going to be him with the safety and I just usered him out of the way I thought I don't know I didn't mean to move him that far to the side that didn't work well, that's annoying. Uh, at least we're so far 2-2 two two on third downs. That gives us a decent chance. We'll see. Will we have somebody open, or will I just have to scramble for this there? Wow. Javon Hiley was way more open than I expected. And he gets an easy 21 yards. That might have been the most open we've ever had a receiver. That was the route that I initially wanted to go to, but I didn't think it was going to be an option. So I just kind of ignored him for a while, and then it, it just it was too obvious. I couldn't not make that throw. Reese gets eight more yards on a first down carry. And we're getting to that point now where it's going to be a little bit worrisome if you're the mean green. Uh, less than two minutes to play here in the quarter. We're going to get audible looking deep because it looks like they want to bring a safety. We'll see. Can we find Javon Hiley? Or maybe we go the other side for Dion Fountain, the receiver who's coming back. And again, my user, what am I doing right now? I'm just pulling these guys out of the way. It's third and two because I'm so bad. I just keep accidentally moving these guys way more than I intend to. And uh, just missing even a chance. Reese 
got enough for the first down. Had to kick that one out to the side and it just barely worked. So I keep throwing up 50-50 balls and then missing my receiver entirely. Um, but the running is working, so I don't know. Uh, I'm just worried that we're going to throw that inevitable pick. Reese, another great first down carry. This could turn into a career rushing game as again we will just get outside the pocket. There's Javon Hiley open again and he holds on to it for a first and goal. He's getting a lot of separation today. 11 of 15 with three interceptions for Grayson now. As he will hand this one off on first and goal. Picking up the blocking. Reese dives into the end zone. Gets eight yards once again. That's like his 10th eight-yard pickup. And uh, he gets another rushing touchdown to extend our lead. 35-17. So far, this has been one of the most complete games from the offense. As again, we will make this a returnable kick. And again, they get out past the 30. These guys are good at their special teams. But the offense has had a very good game. Can the defense show up here when it matters? First and 10, nearing the end of the third quarter. They're going to go out, and quarterback's going to scramble, and we'll bring him down for a loss of two. It's the defense's third sack of the game, and of course they have the... Uh, interception to go along with that so some big plays uh this one's going to be a handoff with a lot of space to work with enough to pick up nine yards and get him in a third and short we're gonna see if we can manage to get this blitz on third and three and never mind we don't have to worry about it a little bit of a breather and a chance to think about it for the defense as we have come to the end of the third quarter up 35 17 in the bowl game that will not only see us ranked at the end of the season if we win but it'll also give us Double-digit wins. One more quarter is all we're asking from the defense. As we kind of expect to see our run to open this one up. Third and three. It's going to be a pass. Quarterback has a man on an out route. And he's got enough for the first down. It was a close spot, but they give it to him. Those out routes really killing our uh, man coverage. On this first down. They will step back to pass again. Quarterback's going to scramble again. And... Oh, no. I missed him. No fumble either. Darn it. This quarterback is doing, like, just enough to get away from me on, on those. And then my occasional misses certainly don't help. Bringing the corner blitz. They go over the middle to find the running back who has a lot of room to, to work with and got himself 23 yards. So the defense has certainly not started this fourth quarter doing so hot but uh, over the middle we get the quick tackle no he's not down yet he stands back up he might have got an extra yard there oh that was scary we brought the safety blitz and it almost bit us uh right back immediately this time they're gonna throw over the middle porter gets there to deflect it away it's third and long the defense has a chance to hold one more time i'm gonna make a big mistake here first off i'm expecting maybe a screen but also, I think it might be an out route that burns us over the middle. They they are there, and we get the stop. Oh, my gosh. They have to go for this, I think. 5-12 left in the game. And it is going to be them going for it. So, kind of expecting them to pass this ball. We'll see what we can do to defend it. They do go to the air over the middle of the field. They had a guy open, but we get the pressure. Rushed five on the play. And that's our fourth sack of the game. I think that might have been Gunter getting in there for his first it's a turnover on downs, and it's time to burn this clock. No reason for us to keep this game going longer than we need to. So we'll start to burn it down while handing it off to Reese, and hopefully we can pick up a couple of first downs. 303 total yards for us to their 288. This one looking a little bit scary. Try to avoid the delay of game here. Can we get the playoff in time? We can. Grayson keeping it made a man miss. The blocking was great. Can he get another one? Grayson got to stay in bounds here. It's 37 yards on the option keeper. Man, it would have been even better if he got a block there from number eight. Well, I thought that it was number eight. Maybe it was number six, Javon Hiley. And if that's the case, I don't know if we're going to pass to him again. You got to block for your quarterback on a run like that. Well, no matter what, we are in field goal range with three minutes to play. So we'll just keep this on the ground. And uh, if we have to kick it on fourth down... So be it, another run from Reese White gets us a yard up the middle, but keeps that clock moving, most importantly. So it's uh, third down. We are perfect on our third down so far this game. 
I don't think that that's going to continue. We'll let this bur clock burn as much as we can. The snap is there. Reese got closer than I expected. Got six of the eight. It's fourth and two, though, and we'll just kick the field goal here. Try to secure the victory and allow Massimo Biscardi, our kicker, who has done so well, give him the opportunity to hit one more field goal. He gets us three more points. It's 38-17, to 17, a three-score lead with a minute and a half to go. So this one will go down as a great game from the Chanticleers. Uh, maybe our most complete performance of the season. And uh, a good win against a pretty solid ranked North Texas. I thought that was a screen for a second. Quarterback goes back. Spillum gets there in time to break up the pass. And uh, we get a second down. If I'm being honest, I kind of wish that they completed that so that the clock could be burning. A minute and a half still left in this game. They will step back to throw. And the quarterback has all the time in the world. And he threw it over the middle. Gunter dropped the pick. And so did the safety as he came up. Third and ten. This one could have been over twice. They're lucky not to have an interception. As they will go to the air once again on this third down. And it's another deflected pass from Derek Bush to bring up the fourth down. The defense showing some incredible coverage on that final drive. As they're going to punt this one away. Waving the white flag with a minute and 20. Unless we see a fake, but I don't expect that. And uh, Diggs will be back to return. What I imagine will be his final punt of the season, getting a solid 10 yards. And now we can just burn the rest of this clock. Until we see them not take the timeouts, we won't quite come out in the victory formation. So one more carry at least for Reese White, who is going to lose some yards. No, he got back to the line of scrimmage, but no timeout will come out and take a knee now. Well, eventually we'll take a knee. Uh, I called the spike ball on accident instead of the, the Neil. Can I audible out of this? Oh, I can. Can we get the playoff? No. Well, we take a delay a game on accident, but it's not going to matter at the end of the day. I honestly didn't know that you could audible out of that type of play. Uh, but that's good to know. There we go. The victory formation. McCall takes the knee, except for the bad pick, which is really my fault. Uh, very good game from Grayson, and we'll get him back as well. Go ahead and let this clock wind down to the triple zeros, and you're looking at your... Uh, New Orleans Bowl winners. That's a good game. We played very well. We won it. It wasn't even close. If that's a sign of what could happen next year, I'm looking, or I'm going to be very excited. Looking forward to it. Great dime on that play of the game to Javon Hiley on the audible. And uh, we come away with a big, big win. 10 wins on the season. What a fantastic game, as we can see the little recap here. Beat them easily on the ground. 205 rushing yards. They did pass for 218, but we did a decent job. One turnover for each squad, and just how about the fact that we kept them scoreless in the entire second half. That's very good for us. A very solid victory. Reese goes 29 carries for 152 yards and a pair of touchdowns. And Derek Bush on defense. Four tackles, tackle for loss, an interception on the first play of the game. And he came close to ending it with an interception as well. And there's the trophy for the New Orleans Bowl. We can see it now 10-3 and three on the season. Go ahead and advance to the end of the bowl week or the, the end of the bowl season and see uh, who won their bowl games. So we end the season at number 16. Oh, we flew up because of that win. I guess a lot of ranked teams would have lost in the bowl games. How do we see the bowl results though? Yeah, Notre Dame, wow, only won 16-3 against Middle Tennessee. That's kind of an interesting one. And again, I'll just kind of scroll through. So you might have to pause to see your team if we don't, you know, feature them or focus on them. But uh, we'll just scroll through here. Try to get down to the good bowl games, that are the, the ones that we were more interested in, uh, typically with the higher ranked teams. And the one, the first one I'm interested in here is this Peach Bowl. South Carolina beats North Carolina. No, I read that wrong. North Carolina beats South Carolina 41 to 21. They end the season uh, both with three losses, double digit wins, and one rank apart. 13 versus 12 there. Impressive. Uh, what's next? The Rose Bowl. Michigan beats Washington. 
And the Wolverines end up number two in the country to end the season. In the Fiesta Bowl, it's Clemson taking down Ohio State. The Sugar Bowl, it'll be Auburn winning by five against Texas. So maybe good thing that they didn't make it into the national championship. We'll see. The Cotton Bowl, uh, the unranked Nebraska team that's now eight and six, came close to beating number five Iowa State, 35-32 only a field goal there in the Orange Bowl. The Ducks slaughter Florida 34 to 7. As a Ducks fan, I got to say I'm stoked with that. They end the season at number three. I'm sure they'll fall off as they always do in this game, though. And in the Natty, Oklahoma loses 24 to 14 against Miami, who completes the perfect season. And uh, the Hurricanes, led by Nkosi Perry, get it done. What a crazy season it's been. Let's just go ahead and hit advance. Go to the end because this one's over. Our second year in the books. The question is what will happen with the off season? As uh, look at that, nine and four with a Lending Tree Bowl victory to ten and three with a Sun Belt Championship and a New Orleans Bowl victory. Can we make the next step? We'll see. That's going to do it for us though. This episode as we've made it into the off season. We will save all of our off-season for next episode, and we might play a game as well, but uh, there's a chance that we just make it like kind of a short, uh, just an off-season episode, but I guess you'll be able to tell by the length of the next video. But I have a little change in store. You guys will have to wait to see that one. Um, and if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. It's been, a, it's been a fun episode and a fun season. And the support that you guys have shown for it this this uh, past couple weeks has been amazing. So amazing, in fact, that we did manage to unlock uh, channel memberships. If you look, one of the perks uh, at the second tier is going to be uh, that will allow some people to name our recruits. So don't feel obligated, but if that's something that you're interested in, that is an option now. But enough of that. Again, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, scroll on down and click the button to do so. Maybe hit the bell as well. And while you're down there, you can mosey on over to the description where you can find links for our Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster where we play non-NTA related games as well as a link to my Twitter and our community Discord, which uh, is kind of being revamped at the moment. There's also a link for the CFB revamped mod if you're trying to get this for yourself. With that being said, again, thank you guys for watching. Excited to get into year three to see what the uh, what the team turns into, maybe what Grayson McCall can turn into. Um, but as far as this episode goes, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.